Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Tom Kelly. Great. Um, I'm just uh, here on behalf of uh, Northeast Solar and our customer over at 26 Lawrence Plain Road. Um, we've put together nine copies uh, for the building application, building permit application. Who's 26 Lawrence Plain Road? Uh, customer name is Jonathan King. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I can dish out these nine copies to you gentlemen now. That's. Are you applying for the special permit, or is this a ground mount? Ground person? mount. Yeah. Okay. Small residential. Okay. Ground mount. Is this what you're looking for? I don't know. I have to look at it. <laughs> okay. Can we see it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. There are two things missing. Uh, the um, twenty-six million mm -hmm. Waiting on a P stamped memo from the manufacturer. Okay. Um, but wanted to uh, work a little sooner and later on behalf of the customer. Get this out to you, to everybody. In person, though. Yes. Thumbnail sketches, 20 panels, observing setbacks, not in the floodplain. So the panels are going to be along the long clear. Um, Next sheet. It's going to be parallel with the southern property line. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I see a second page. Okay. So, are you applying tonight, or what are you trying to do tonight? Or is this just trying to get ask questions and then come back to us in the, in, in, at the next meeting? Well, I'd like to apply, but like I said, not in that packet is uh, one of the items, a uh, PE stamped letter from the manufacturer. We just didn't get that yet. Okay. Um, so, with just with timing in mind and respecting the process, yes, I wanted to. Responsibles. Get this in front. Yeah. Okay. Have so a butter's on mailing labels? Yeah. No, we have a butter. We don't have one mailing label. Stickers. Red stickers. We don't need this. Red stickers. No. Just an administrator. See, right here is, you know, we're told. Oh, that's right. Right here. That's right. This is not a special. This is right. This is, that's right. You're right. This is not a north special hearing. South side. Administrator review. That's right. It's on the east side. I forgot about that. Yeah. He said of what we do want to do is in order to allow time for everyone's comments because it's yeah uh, so probably put it for uh, first meeting in November yeah where's the location right next to one one five right next to north of the uh, right Tony Sebastos other side of the street no right here Sebastos in there not the oh, other. that's right. That's right. So okay. the east side of 47. Oh, east side of 47. Okay, so it's not north. on the south side. Right. Right. East side. East side. Okay. That's 20 Samosco. The closest property line is the southern property line. That's okay. 20 Samosco. Right. You're north of 20 Samosco, the logger. Right. Next town, so. No. Yeah. Right. Is it the Teddy Pichakowski's house? Thousand feet. Okay. He's not in the butter. <coughs> He's beyond the 300 feet? Yes. Yeah.
we can set that's election day. That's not, not a public hearing. Not a public hearing. It's just yeah. administrative review. Okay. We can set you can we can set your review date up for one month until the October sixth. If that's okay with you. Okay. okay. Sure. Yeah, definitely want to respect the process, but obviously the customer wants it. Yeah, this is not a ground. special permit. Right. Okay. But we do have a notice requirement to get definitely. it out to the Yeah, other that's department. why I'm here today. Yeah. What day are you doing it, Jimmy? Uh, October 6th. I mean, November 6th. So what should I tell the customer and what should I gear it for next? Well, we need what you with the, the paper that you missed yep. and basically this package. And what will look if you could on you these. these. Uh, well, we have to distribute these to the I'll, I'll just I'll distribute that, yeah. But bring bring more. Yeah, if you yeah. could if you could take this picture right here. Okay. And superimpose what the solar panel would look like for the public hearing. Okay. Okay. Like a 3D something? Or that would be great, yeah. Are they going to be uh, visible from uh, Route 47? Yeah. Or they gonna well, they're about 175 feet off 47. Yeah. Um, yeah, but behind I said, the house. Okay. So Are they going to be visible? An another, uh, yeah. On, it's, okay, on this, this sheet right here? Yeah. What John is asking, will these be visible from 47? Um, if I mean, the, the short the, the short answer is no. I mean, it's behind the house. Um, and he's got stuff like a boat and a garden here. But maybe from over here, catching the right line, you'd see it. Yeah. Theoretically, even from right here. OK, uh, so, so maybe what, maybe what what we might want is some kind of a screening that would just hide these a little bit, that you, so that the John John's big on making sure you can't they can't be seen from the road. Okay. Okay. Some some kind of arborvitae. Yeah, like it. This looks like going north. You're not going to be able to even see it because Tony. It's no. It's I mean it's only about going eleven feet tall. Going south. Yeah. Uh, even even going well. That's a, you know depending what's over here. I mean they have a fence right on this property line that's about. 10 feet tall. Okay. So that fence, that's no 10 feet tall. No? No. Hey, anchoring mechanism, uh, augered in or cement? Earth anchor. So just just, just pop posts driven into the ground? Not even posts. Um, like screws? No, it's a, about a seven foot cable with a little bullet shaped thing that we drive down and then we add some tension to it and it sets as the anchor. Yeah. It's a dream to install, I, and I've never. I'd yeah. be, I'd be I'd, out of curiosity. I'd be interested in seeing the details on that. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I think the P stamp memo would be helpful for that because um, that sounds pretty nifty. It is. Yeah, and frankly, it's a dream for applications like this. Okay. Yeah, but no, no concrete for any scope. And of no posts. No posts. No, it's. It ends up being a. This is a steel platform. That, uh, how how long is the cable going down? In six and a half feet. Six and a half. Yep. And depending on the the localized wind and snow, usually it ends up being um, one anchor on the front pads and then two anchors on the, the rear platforms. How many panels on this? Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Not, not, not how, how, many, how many KW is that going to put out? In this setting, it's it's a lot. It's going to be between eight and nine thousand kilowatt hours a year. So, so I mean, but but on, on the rate, so that, that those twenty panels are rated like eight to eight to nine KW. Yeah. So twenty three sixty watt panels is 7.2 kW, but it's Hadley and... Oh, I understand, I understand, I understand all that. I'm just saying, I've got yeah. 32 panels that puts out 7.3. They've, 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 
they become that much more efficient. Yeah, so I don't, do you know the wattage on your panels? Mine, my, I've got 32 panels and a rate of 7.3 yeah. kW. Yeah, okay, so this is 20 panels at 7.3. So they're almost 30%. 35%. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's wow. kind of the name of the game. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Okay, so we'll see you on November November 6th, a couple more updated things. Um, and some screening to chew on. Yep. Yeah. Is that somewhere, didn't we miss that somewhere in the documentation? Or Well, it, 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 it says sufficient screening, and we kind of, it is kind of open to interpretation. But if you can't, if it can't be seen from 47, that's the biggest thing is, you know, that's why I'm saying, put, put, take a, Okay. Superimpose it somehow on your on your drawings. That if you think you can't see it from 47, then you may be okay because of the buildings and whatever the trees that are there. But wouldn't, okay. wouldn't the neighbors perhaps want not be able to see it from their property also? Well, that'll, that'll be it. That'll be yeah, right. exactly. So that that's just not the only issue. Okay. The neighbors may have some input here too. Sure. I mean the, the fence to the south, that's doing the trick. Um, and then to the north. Yeah. So yeah, we'll gladly get more info together. Okay. And uh, I'll tell the customer things are in motion. Okay. Great. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Mr. Phil, I'm looking for participating in this. Oh. Oh. So you think that's maybe a conflict? It possibly is. You may be far enough, or far enough out that it isn't, but. Just to be safe, I don't think you need more. Alright, so David Phil, 39 Madden Road. Uh, what you see is a, I guess, a plot plan or site plan for uh, my property. And as part of the uh, very small subdivision approval, there was a non buildable area in the front and the rear of the property um, that was reserved for agricultural or ecological purposes only. And so what I'm seeking here is uh, permission to place a 40 by 60 barn, uh, partially in the buildable area, partially in the non-buildable area, as well as the 10 by 14 approximately uh, chicken coop. What are you gonna use it for? Uh, chickens in the chicken coop and uh, farm equipment storage in the barn. Chickens are certainly agricultural. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion uh, to amend the very small subdivision to. Uh, Actually, I'm sure we need, we need to amend it, but we make a motion to find that the erection of the barn and uh, a chicken coop in the otherwise non-buildable area is consistent with the terms of approval. Second. Chickens, you plan to hold them there? <laughs> Five, six hundred? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not sure at this point. Are these free range chickens, or no. what kind of breed are they? No. Not You're not range. into that, or what? Not free range. Oh, okay. okay. Wouldn't want a coop up for free range. Yeah. I was just checking in case yeah. the neighbors had a question they yeah. could answer. I'm sure they will. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Okay. Anything else? Nothing? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four, zero, one. Abstain. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Shumway. I guess I'm on my own. Uh, we had the uh, presentation for 22 Breckenridge for the additional building lot. 
um, something that might have been a miscommunication between myself and the surveyor or something I oversaw was uh, that I understand the non-buildable <coughs> means no dwellings. Um, I was hoping to be able to put a barn somewhere on the property. Why do we need four? We have horses. At the multiple years. Yes. Page storage. This is what? Um, yeah. So this is. Yeah, this is yeah. it. Yeah. We're looking for the house somewhere in this location here, and I was looking to put the barn somewhere here. And I would note that the barn would not even be visible to any other homes. Or what is, what's the purpose of the barn? Horses. Agricultural hay storage. Horse barn? What? A horse barn? Yes, sir. Were they going to graze over here? Yes. If it's agricultural, I wouldn't see a problem with that. About how big of a barn? An idea? Probably 36, 36, something like that. Not sure. no, all we want is not, no additional houses, so. Okay. And then I guess, well, it's a, in a question, it's not something I'm even considering, but I was asked to ask is swimming pool, is that an issue on any part if there was something there at some point? Well, if you put a swimming pool in, the only thing, what is this property part? Which lot would be tied to? This this one here. Okay. Where, yeah, I would be. yeah, so the, the pool technically should stay on this building lot. Okay. Okay. Unless you make the lot, unless you want to move this lot line a little bit to put the pool. In other words, make this lot bigger. And do you understand what I'm saying? But the yeah. pool, the pool, the yeah. pool should be on this so, lot, so not or not encroaching on that lot. So a barn can be over here, but a pool should be in the. In because the, the the pool is considered residential, and it's four year res. The res whatever yeah, residence will be it's here. It's just a crazy hope and dream. Is there a maximum size of a barn? If it's, agricultural, if it's agricultural, he could put in a good size one, as long as it complies with setbacks and everything. Sure. Okay. Right. And I, got, I know somebody in Deerfield has got a horse barn that he bought the property, and this horse barn is like, I want to say it's 75 by 100 and 125. Yeah, it's right. Monster. Yeah, they, yeah. Well, they you probably know. board horses. Well, it's, it's actually a riding state, a riding arena. Yeah. It's not, it, it, it's going to size onto the roof, but it's not insulated already. Sounds right. fun, just out of my budget. You know, and uh, I was like, boy, you could make that heck of a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, <sighs> okay, I'll make the same motion that uh, erecting a horse barn on the non build area is consistent mm -hmm. in terms of approval. You get okay. the motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Um, All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes by Thank you for your time. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Nixon. I'm here for the hearing, so I didn't. Oh, you're just, you're just, just, just here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, can I make a clarifying note? Uh, which hearing are you? Uh, marijuana. That's not for hearing tonight. <laughs> yep. That's up for discussion with right. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Right. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to all of your to participate in the discussion. But that the public hearing on the zoning article is scheduled for two weeks from tonight. Right. Right. Thank you for helping okay. Susan. Yeah. Brought the revised which didn't have a lot of changes since last time. Right. We put a couple of little... Some uh, organizational things, right? Yeah. Renumbering on stuff that didn't, yeah. that didn't change anything. Copies? Yeah, copies in there. Uh, I have a copy of this from you from the last one that you sent. That's the one that she picked it up. Okay. Do you get one, John? Mm -hmm. I need one. Anybody in the audience, we've got two actors if you want to take a look at what we're talking about. This is, what, this is the same thing I'm going to email you. You, just, you can share them and kind of go along with us. You might have something, you might see something that catches your eye, either you like or hate. 
So some formatting things. Um, I realize that uh, you had made some formatting changes to the chart. Yeah, yeah I, 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 just moved stuff, I just moved stuff around and renamed them to be consistent with what we have exactly. today. Yeah, I didn't okay. change any wording, I don't think. Right. I just no, no, you, made, moved, you I just, just moved put them. in commercial or industrial. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's going on with the treatment center? Where does that fit in? What's a treatment center? For, med for medical. For medical. This is not medical. For oh, that, 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 that hasn't changed from what's where that? For, Is that for addiction or what is that? The one we previously approved? Stay here. Yes. A medical marijuana treatment center. On this? Oh, right, right here. here. Yeah, the, 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 the right next to the, the very last line. Right. Oh, any type of medical med, 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 marijuana license facility except a marijuana treatment center. We don't. A medical marijuana treatment center would be a an addiction center. I'm assuming you're like a. That's what I thought. It's semi right. Is that what that's intended well, to not be? Not necessarily. It could be a center where you get treated with medical marijuana. Well, what is it? So let's look at the definitions. Medical marijuana treatment centers on page four at the bottom. Also known as registered marijuana dispensary. Okay. Non profit entity registered. Oh, that's what that, that, that is a that is the one facility we've approved for the Sunoco station. That's what that means. I didn't know that you had done that, but yeah. Yeah, we have a medical marijuana okay. facility approved at the uh, Sino, the old Sunoco station across the stop and shop. Next to Fred. Okay. So, so next to, next to the mosque. Okay. So there's problems there. Right? Well, it's not next to the mosque. Okay, so the medical marijuana treatment center is outside the terms of the adult use marijuana bylaw, yes. which is why it, it's there as an accept in that case. Yes. Correct. Okay. So the medical marijuana treatment center actually is allowed elsewhere in the business district. That's right, yes. But if they want to dovetail the recreational marijuana or adult marijuana onto that Sunoco station, could they? Yes, under state law, they can. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what I thought. And, and uh, they'd be a marijuana retailer at that point, which is allowed right. or by special permit. So that's fine. Yeah. Right. Now, Susan, the special permit uh, in Conway, they approved the special permit that lapses after five years. Okay. Is that, uh, I've never heard of something like that. We had a um, special permit that had to be renewed every year, so it's not unlike that. That's a question. Well, that, that could be because the controversy is going to become with the people in the audience yeah. with the uh, the farmer growing the medical marijuana. No, no, the farmer growing marijuana. Uh, the marijuana. Uh, that's a question that I was thinking about. That um, let's go over this okay. before okay. we get into that. Let's go over what we have here, and we can get into that one. Okay. okay. I don't, want to, I don't want to muddy the water anymore. Get over that. Okay. So we changed the numbers, right? Everything's 30. Yeah. So it matches. The definitions have not changed. Right. At all. We added 30.4.2.6 and 0.7 about lighting. Right. Okay. Yes. Because that was a question that, that's a concern that was raised by people at, at, a, at a meeting that was conducted. And basically it says that security lighting shall comply with lighting of the zoning bylaw. However, any illumination utilized for drawing purposes shall be shielded so as not to be visible to neighboring properties and to the sky above. So basically at night, it's going to be black. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, why would, would you block from the sky above? Because you dark sky, because if it's going to, if it, just because you can't see it from the neighbors, if it lights up the sky, the neighbors are going to be, you know, say they're stargazers, you know, uh, or something like that. Even with the lighting, if the facility is within a couple hundred feet of a residence, mm -hmm. that lighting, use the greenhouses that are over off of uh, the old Cummins farm, 
where it used to be the uh, Montgomery Rose. Montgomery Rose is there. And they, when, they, when, they, when they put those on at night, you can see the light in the sky from my house. And I'm seven miles away. Wow. Hidden by a mountain. Okay. You know why? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I'm looking in that direction. One I won't do. You know. Right. Um, when they used to be over on Route Nine, you could really see the greenhouses lighting up the sky at night. So. Um, Ooh, so you know, what did they do for that? Was they carved over the place. Or Rome inside. That's that's how that's what they're going to have to figure out what to do. This is the regulation. When our designers, they figure out how to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's thirty. Point four, point two, point six, and point seven. seven. And point seven. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. Okay. Everything else, I think, uh, you know, distances and everything else, we've got pretty good security. We're incorporating um, the state guidelines. The state uh -huh. five hundred point one one zero by reference mm -hmm. um, in 30.4, 30 30.4.2.6, 30 right? Oh, wait a minute, we got some, I got the wrong, I got some, a numbering concern. 30.4.2.6. Security lighting shall comply with section 8.8. Yeah, 30.4.2.6 should be 30.4.2.6. Eight. Oh, yes. I see that. Okay. That's the one foot candle? No. 30.4.2.6 is the one foot candle. Yeah, okay. I'm saying. But for the people in the audience, just. On, page, on top of page 7, I, got a, I, I, didn't, I didn't number that one properly. 30.4.2.6 30 on the top of page 7 should be 30.4.2.8. Okay. So just change it. And what it happened here at the bottom of page six, there's that sentence about signage. That should probably be up under 30.4.2.5. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, which one is that, Jimmy? Right on a. What there's a, a sentence. What, but that, that, that sentence right here could bottom. be under um, this one. Under? Yeah, should be included in that line. With the rest of the signage. Yeah. So how they're going to chop 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 down. Mm -hmm. It's not changing any wording, it's just putting it in a correct location. Right. You're referring to the state bylaw. Is there any paragraph that if there's any potential conflict between our local zoning and the state uh, that the uh, the state law will prevail, or is that understood? See, I think it says it at the very beginning. Subject to the zoning uh, um, on page two, top with bylaw and Massachusetts. Uh, we'll be Subject to provisions of 48 right. chapter yeah. 94 G. just general, right? Applicability, 30.3. Certainly they're going to revise it. Yes, yes. Nothing in this section shall supersede federal and state laws, which means federal and state laws control. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, the very first sentence. Okay. Good point, Joe. I mean, that pretty much takes care of this. I think it's pretty. On pretty the last page at 30.5.13 is the reference to the security requirements of the Oh, state security requirements, okay, right. And that is. Right. commissioning. And, that, the, and the security requirement, just for anybody in the audience, 30.5.13 references Massachusetts General Laws 
um, as the security requirements. And they're pretty stringent. It's not a matter of you might do this, it's a matter of this is the way you're going to do it. Which one are you at? 30.5.12. Next page. And what three? Five, five, page 10. Okay. Wait. There. Okay. Yeah, that one. 30.5.10. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. your reference is that state? Yes. 30.5.10. This one right here. I know that, but the explanation is there, not here, right? The reference is here. The requirements are in the state. So how is someone... They're going to look them up. They're going to look them up. They're going to look them up. I just realized I think the number is wrong here, too. It's 30.5 point. It should be point one three point one. Point one three point. Oh yes. Point one three. Yeah, yeah. There's right. another catch. You're right. Yeah. That's thirty five point one. Thirty point five point one three. No, this, and then I'm, the items right that are listed. These under these, these these eleven should all be thirteens. David, yeah. it's so, it, if I make these corrections, and as long as they're available for the town meeting handout, we can just reference in the, in the uh, uh, article this, correct? Yeah, and I'm, I'm following the corrections right here, so I can just go back to town hall and plug them in. What okay. do you need them for? I uh, need them for tomorrow night when the select board uh, signs. Oh, board. that's easy. Okay. Okay. We'll, why don't we don't make changes? Let, let Jim make the change and get them to you. Okay. Okay. That way, we, that way, that, that way make sure if, it, if it's, you know, we're not doing this at all. There may be okay. some discussion here, too. Of well, course. That's why I'm here. Okay. Well, with the neighbors. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 All right. If someone wants to grow a field of tobacco and have their farmer, they can grow whatever they want. Correct. Right. As long as it's agricultural. May we restrict where marijuana can be grown because it's uh, an agricultural crop? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not agricultural. It's not, not agricultural. Under state law. Okay, okay. My mistake. Yeah. More to the middle Chapter 351. Okay. Specifically exclude marijuana. Mike was making a point originally when the people that were proponents of growing it as an agricultural use came in and they gave the impression to us that it was going to be grown in a field surrounded by corn. And then when they had the meeting with the neighbors, they said it's going to be grown in greenhouses. Oh, this is a proposal that you received. No, 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 no. That's this the, is just general talk. They're about trying to jump the farms. gun, and they're anticipating. They want to be there first with the most, you know. Uh, okay. So they had a meeting with the neighbors, okay. and that's when they were saying, "Oh no, we don't want to grow it like corn out in the field or tobacco. Okay. It's going to be in greenhouses." Well, you know, the state co cops fly around with choppers to prevent that. No, but, but there is a difference because all of a sudden now you have a building and now all of a sudden you have lighting and, uh, and depending on the size of it, it can be rather imposing and it's going to be there all year round. So that was the... Uh, yeah, but the building they can grow year round. The what? field they can't. Correct. 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 Now, I mean, I... I think that pretty much takes care of the bylaw as we have it. Mm -hmm. The question, now getting back to what was raised by a few people, and I was thinking about it myself, is the general idea of a business growing it inside of a building to me is pretty tame, if you would, other than the appearance of the building. But the building itself is going to be enclosed, going to be secure, and that's more or less obvious. However, Greenhouses for open grow are a whole different idea, and um, 
I mean, granted, the actual, well, let, me, let me rephrase that, the open grow, the stink of marijuana is short, I'm going to guess a week or two. However, if it's a greenhouse, the stink, excuse me, is pretty much going to be fairly consistent in that the idea of a greenhouse is to grow it year round. So there's going to be multiple times during the course <coughs> of the year where there's going to be an odor from it. And the bylaw says no odor shall emanate beyond the boundaries to the such and such and such and such. And a question I've got for the board for us to think about is what if it does? Right now we're giving a special permit and they have it. And the idea of rescinding that is not even in here or renewing it. And what I'm wondering is if there should be something like we had in some of the other special permits where they need to renew it every year for the first couple of years. And if they're good people with no complaints, then it's going to be, let's say, a third renewal and right. keep on going. But it just seems Jim, to me I, that, that if somebody's going to make all this kind of investment in it, then it's a big investment. Yep. to do it with security and this board can turn around a year later and say you're all done no only if they aren't while doing what they're supposed to be doing in other words somebody comes in i'll use a greenhouse but that's probably the more obvious one they come into the greenhouse and they comply with the bylaw we have no reason not to reapprove it they come in and they put a greenhouse in at all well, we're not always covering, it's not always being covered at night and the neighbors can see it. No. Well, you do have a requirement in here for annual reporting. Well, here's annual reporting. Okay. It says um, provide a copy of current uh, state license for the facility and its owners and demonstrate continued compliance with the conditions of the special permit. Well, the, the critical but, thing, Jim, at that hearing was the Commissioner, former Commissioner of Agriculture was there, and the neighbors were concerned about the smell, the odor emanating from the greenhouses. And uh, so he was saying, oh, all we can do is be good neighbors and sing together and sing kumbaya. It will work out. You can work it out. And I asked if there was a particular measuring Thing. For example, we have the one foot candle of light spillage onto your neighbor's property that can be, so we can measure it and we can measure sound. But he said there is no measure, and they've had a lot of agricultural complaints about manure, and sure. so there is no measuring device for odor. What's that smell like? And skunk. It smells like a skunk. Uh, yes. And uh, so that, that and the and so the, the <laughs> comment I was <laughs> making before is that we may have to have a smell test after a year or two years or something like that uh, because once again I like to reiterate what I say many many times zoning is that right between the rights of the individual landowner and the rights of the neighbor or the community next door. And it's a delicate balance, and it kind of depends what side you're on, how the skills are picked. But that's our job, what, is what, to try to make a reasonable balance. What, what, what section were you in, Susan, for that? I was on page 8, 30.4.4.3. Uh, now, what if they don't demonstrate the question, I, and, I, and I raised it early on in our special, when we were talking about some of this, they're filing a report. The neighbors are complaining. They're not complying with the bylaw mm -hmm. or with the special permit. Mm -hmm. okay. What recourse do we have? Because we can't rescind a special permit unless it specifically says in this bylaw that there is a time clause on it. The zoning enforcement officer can go in and say, You're not in compliance. I'm going to fine you. The police department, if it's uh, if they're not in order with the law, that's another story. But in the rezoning thing, we are extremely limited in what we can and cannot do. And we can't rescind a special permit. But after a year or so, we can review it. Only if we say that. 
that's where uh, that's, that's where I'm exactly going. what well, I'm getting. Add another sentence here to clarify that. Okay, because Conway does. I uh, just what, what what I'm saying is, what we this is from experience. Yep. We used to have we have special permits for home occupation, home business, and it was something else. And apartments. 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 Mm -hmm. Each of those had a one-year renewal for I think it was. They sh these permits shall be renewed every year on the anniversary of the granting for, I think it was three or four years. And if they were good law-abiding, by law-abiding businesses, after the third or fourth renewal, you were all set. And because there was that cloud hanging over the head, we never had a complaint. Every one of them did what they were supposed to, and even the neighbors said, this is working wonderful. And it worked out so well, and because the people weren't redoing them as they were supposed to, we took those clauses out of those three special permits. Mm. Okay, and people would basically work, and it worked well. This is something brand new, and I think we should have some kind of renewal for this every year. If you're complying with the bylaw, it's just, you know, and basically during the course of the year, I guarantee you, these people in the audience, or some of them, but there will be others, if they're not in compliance, we're going to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And a bill, and so will the zoning enforcement office. I mean, I don't know, they're going to be complaining to a lot of people if they're not in compliance. And then they come in for the renewal. You're not doing what you're supposed to. We're not going to give you a permit. At the John's point, there is a huge amount of money going to be invested. So it's to their... Um, benefit, for lack of a better word, to be in compliance all the time so that they don't have complaints and do what you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Because this is a big cloud hanging. This, this is not like a, 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 you know, somebody with a, an accessory apartment. They may have, you know, twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollars tied up. These people are going to have well into the six figures tied up into these businesses. So do we know if the state permitting requires compliance with local zoning? thinking that if yes. they get a cease and desist order or a violation notice from the building inspector with a copy to the state cannabis control board and they are at risk of having their permit pulled. Well, that, that's the other thing that I was thinking about too. Could we but they override us? That that's fine. No, I'm thinking that's that's gonna be the twenty thousand pound elephant sitting on uh, whatever the whatever fear or or lack of fear they have of local enforcement having the state pull their license is a whole nother thing should really get their attention right it's like having the state banking commissioner pull your charter you know it's like the you know, it's, it's, it's similar to the ABC the, the, the town can play with your liquor license but the state can say you lost it and you're done you know I, I, I really think this thing because this is new to the community, that to have this come in, to protect the health and safety of the citizens of Hadley, this should be renewed. If there's any complaints, then it could be addressed right yes. there. That, that's true. I mean, I, I'm leaning towards having it an annual review for a couple of years. And the same thing, if it turns out that things are going wonderful and, and businesses are in compliance, right. we can always take it out down yep. the road like we did with the other permit. But to have it in there from the get-go makes whoever the applicant is, you're going to comply. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, if we could put it, instead of putting put it on, on review date, I would say we actually give them a time frame, something like, you know, between uh, December 1 and January 30th, this permit must be renewed every year, which gives them time for the growing seasons. Who's, who's going to inspect the growing facility before it's operational to Nobody. make sure everything is in place? Nobody. No. The state will. The, the, the state will for their, for their stuff, but for the zoning bylaw, the building inspector will inspect it. And lighting, and, and, for instance, lighting? The, the, that's gonna, part of the building permit. Who's going to make sure? Who inspects the smell? <laughs> Lieutenant Pepe Lafiel? Well, that, that's going and to be the, one person says it stinks, and the other person says it doesn't stink. There is a pause. Do we have an answer from the audience? There is a question. Audience questions, if you want. There's yes. A, there's, a, there's a section 30.4.2.4 ventilation. 
it says if you go to 30.4.2.4.2, no odor for marijuana or its processing can be detected by a person with an unimpaired or otherwise normal sense of smell. Correct. The yeah. primary word in 3.4.2.4 ventilation is it says all indoor marijuana establishments. Is there any reason why the word indoor must be there? So what was that number again? Page six, yeah. thirty four point two point four ventilation. And then it says all indoor marijuana establishments shall be ventilated in such a manner that and then you you go on to two point four point two, no odor. But that's specifically addressing just indoor facilities. I assume a hoose polyethylene greenhouse is really defined as outdoor, and this section would not apply with the word indoor in it right now. Yeah, well, this was originally designed thinking that marijuana would be grown inside of a closed building. Exactly. And the, the, the fact of the matter is that it's probably going to be done in both outdoor and greenhouses. But to the point, um, we just take out the all marijuana establishment shall be ventilated in such a manner. However, I don't think you're going to be able to control the smell from the outdoor. Well, that's going to be, that's, you hit the nail right on the okay, head because that, that, that answers the question then. If, if, they, if the grower can't control the smell, maybe they can't grow. But Well, you know, maybe you shouldn't. This, <laughs> so this, 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 is not this, is, this question goes a little bit beyond marijuana with the neighbors here. Mm -hmm. It had to do with a greenhouse, and then the greenhouse was given a ZBA approval for a variance, and but then there was another greenhouse that went up and chickens were put in and so there is some connection here and if the neighbors for example are being overly zealous with their smell who's going to be an adjudicating force is it going to be the planning board well it, so no, somebody it, it, has it doesn't seem like it's that big an issue it's not a question of whether no unpleasant odor shall emanate it says no odor <laughs> i know so if you can smell it whether you like it or whether you love it or hate it it's a violation and that seems that that seems to be that answers the test what is there a test well it's not like a breathalyzer or something it's a yes or no that so. to me is unfair because anybody if they're mad at their neighbors they say, that's exactly thank you. correct yeah. Yeah. And then, holy <laughs> christ yes yeah, so you got a comment yeah. uh, if, if if i can on, the, on this yep. very subject of, of order uh, i appreciate we do, we all here appreciate the planning board's as we do uh, our concerns are being pretty much voiced or some of them are being voiced by the members now uh, we realize that the, the question of indoor odors versus outdoor odors, and we, we believe that since this is, an, this is an agricultural purpose, it is not allowed now that the neighborhood needs to be protected from adverse smells. Uh, the only trouble, one of the problems we have is that it would be disingenuous to tell growers that they can grow this crop and invest money in, in growing it and, and start down this path uh, only to realize that the bylaws written that there could be no orders escaping the property orders are going to escape the property in colorado neighbors complain for within a quarter mile around of orders from their own growth so it, it's it becomes really difficult unless we say you know that, that it, it must be grown in a greenhouse and it must have charcoal scrubbers, which are what's used in many communities in, in Colorado and Oregon, uh, unless we insist that those are the things that are in place, it really isn't fair to the neighbors or the potential grower. We're, there's going to be, you know, marijuana, there's a variety of marijuana called skunk, because that's how it stinks. So there are going to be unpleasant odors in the neighborhood. That's pretty much a given. So uh, that, the, uh, the lighting is probably controllable. 
Uh, but there's there's so many issues that people, that no one in Massachusetts has any experience with yet. Uh, and it seems like we're, you know, we're, we're looking to be, we're, we're almost looking to be ahead of the curve and the cutting edge on this, and there's just so many unanswered questions. There really are. There's, you know, and the older just being one of them. No one, no one is a just, no, we haven't talked about crime, we've talked about security, but not crime yet. And so there's, there's, there's all sorts of, of concerns, and, and uh, I think, you know, whether this is the appropriate time now, or we need to wait for the, uh, for the public hearing to discuss it more, I, I well, don't know. I, I think we, we need to discuss this kind of stuff now so we can put this as the bylaw forward for the selectmen to look at tomorrow. Now, as far as odors go, I don't really see it as a problem. If we simply say there should be no odors at the boundary, mm -hmm. and a farmer says, well, I can't open grow because that's impossible, you're right. Then you can't open grow. Okay? That's not if you go to, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, if you're growing the marrow, well, the Hadley Blank is not a good, not a good because there's too many hells out there. Middle of uh, on North Maple Street, South Maple Street. If there's some places where the nearest house is, the nearest house is probably well over a thousand, if not two thousand feet away. And if somebody was to put up a quarter of acre there, you may be so far away from a house that you wouldn't have an order. There's a few places in town like that. Granted, very few. Maybe a few places off of and back of a river drive on a Tudor farm or along the Connecticut River. <coughs> the houses are far away. But for the most part, you're absolutely right. There's very few places in town where you can't find a house more than five to 800 feet away. Right, and then this particular uh, project that's been proposed uh, you know, is, is immediately adjacent. And, and, so and that's fine. Well, that's that, and, and, and the point there is, if you're gonna do that, there will be no owners coming out of your greenhouse. And if that costs you a fortune and you can't do it, then you can't do it because that's the fact of the matter. Chip, there was a question too at that meeting uh, of butters and what <coughs> is the, how many feet is that? Depends how far the wind runs. Well, no, I think we should be a little bit more specific. Well, it's it a special should. permit, so it's chapter 40A and it's a so butters it's to a butters to a butters within 300 feet of 300 the property feet. line. Okay, so that's... Uh, yeah, 300 feet away from, from, the, from 300 so feet of the property line. I think but we should name many I farmers, think we should and, name. and the example that was given was that farmer has enough land to put it a thousand yards away, but it seemed to be how close was it to Shattuck Road? It, it was going to be within a couple hundred feet. Yeah, it was but that, be was, almost that was right, right next to all the neighbors. Originally, they were reserving. They, 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 they intended to reserve the right to build right up to the road, fifty feet. Just remember. The exterior or the property, okay, um, or adjoining property, okay. So if he's got a lot of land and decides to put it 200 feet or 100 feet away from this gentleman's property, and he can smell it, that's a violation. But if he puts it, you know, 2,000 feet away. Well, what if he says he still can smell it? <laughs> well, then, then is it, certainly. It, all I'm saying is, if it's in a greenhouse. He can control the odor by filtering. I think like we should. I said. think we should have this as the stinking bylaw. What <laughs> <laughs> fit <is> perfect? <laughs> the fact of the matter is, the state has approved this. Has approved marijuana, and if we don't do something, they'll be growing it everywhere and anywhere. So, so is it possible to look at this uh, to add to? extend their moratorium, get a chance to do some more in-depth research concerning uh, smells, lighting, crime, and all of that, and come up with a, a bylaw that might limit size and scope, so it might even be possible for the it, gentleman it, to it, grow it, on the parcel across the street. It's me. already limited in size. The state limits it in size. They limit your license. No, they limit the size. What, what, what is the size limitation? 100,000 square feet. Well, right. Two and a half. But I'm saying, but that's a 100,000 square feet. That's a, that's a two and a half ten, acres. That's a ten million dollar grow up. That's a two and a half acres. Right, right. That's a ten but million if it's dollar inside operation. and they're going to use scrubbers and stuff, then you can't smell it. But the question here is, 
if we allow the farmers to, to use outside growing. growing, then there's a problem here. That is true. Now, yeah. just for everybody's information. It's true that there are areas in Hadley that can grow this stuff and you're not going to smell it. Who said that? So? I know. Well, how, how do you know, you know that? that? Wait, gentlemen, gentlemen. How do you know that? Just for your information, well, in there's two Nobody articles it's, it's, it's on the town meeting warrant. One is to approve this zoning bylaw and to accept and approve it as, as a zoning bylaw. The other one is to extend the moratorium to June 1st, 2019. Because we aren't sure if this is going to be what we want. So we're taking the two-step approach. We're going to either, one's going to be voted in and one's going to be tabled. We don't know which one's going to be done right now. And we're trying to get all the information we can because this appears on the surface to be okay. Maybe it's not. Maybe it needs a little bit of tuning. Maybe it needs a lot of tuning. Okay? And to think we're going to do a whole bunch of research between now and next May and get a lot of the information is probably wishful thinking. That's not going to happen. We could only get some information because we won't have the available facts from the state in a lot of this stuff. You know, lighting, I think we got pretty much lighting is pretty well addressed. I think the biggest concern is odors. And, you know, maybe we don't allow open growth. Maybe we just stay within closed growing. It seems to me to get a more accurate uh, call on this, there's no other way to do it but to go out of state where they do this now and see what the repercussions are. Well, uh, but for the fact that the state is so far behind on permitting, um, this bylaw is a variant of the one that East Hampton has already adopted. And I think some other communities in PVPC area. But they haven't grown it there yet. Yeah, they haven't grown it but there yet. But right. East Hampton's only doing it inside. Yes. Um, because, but they, that's where we're actually going to get the answers we need. Is, is from other towns that are ahead of us in the process. And, there, and there's at least uh, three states worth, Colorado, Oregon, and California, and there's a, there's a ton of information out there. A quick Google search will bring up you know, factual, not, not anecdotal information, but very factual information uh, because they've commissioned studies and, and all of that, so, so it is out there. And many of the people here in the office, well, we smell, the smell is not out there for measuring smell. There, there is. Yeah, it is. It's in, to in measure Colorado. smell? They have, a, they, have a, they, have a, they have a way that they do measure. Mr. Coster. Um, yes. In the previous discussion, uh, the planning board, I believe, has identified a whole house as not a building. So people grow. Liberty Mutual accident forgiveness in, means it. In a whole house, is that considered indoor? That was the zoning board of appeals, not the planning board. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is. So, to us, a hoop house would be indoor growing. It's a greenhouse. Okay, it's an enclosed facility. And that's, that had an agricultural overtone to it. Right. This is, according to state definition, industrial. Randy? I think there's got to be some definitive way to deal with the smell issue. I, I don't, I, I realize it is an issue, but unless you can scientifically quantify it somehow, all, all you're going to have is somebody, to Johnny's point, I think it smells, but he doesn't notice it, and, and, and oh. back and forth we go. I, I absolutely agree with that, Commissioner. And, and what we, you know, if this gentleman is correct, they actually have developed a way to measure odor. That would be extremely interesting to find out how that's done. The former Commissioner of Agriculture was at that meeting, and he said that's a common complaint of neighbors, manure smell, chicken manure, any kind of manure, and, and you know, pigs. He said there was there is nothing in Massachusetts that can measure smell. He said 
try to be good neighbors to each other, and that's it. That's his, that was his answer. Yeah. But that, that, that's not an acceptable. Yeah, There's got to be. A member of the, I think he's a member of the corporation that's drawn. Yeah. But if I go back to the terms of the bylaw, it says any odor. So it doesn't matter whether you think it's a bad odor. If, it, if you could smell it at all, you're in violation. So I why not I, turn around and limit this to strictly inside growing until the thing is processed? And we don't get in any kind of trouble, but the neighbors don't. I, I, I think where I am personally leaning to that idea too, because it seems like the outdoor grow is going to be right. a insurmountable problem to address. Whereas if it's strictly limited to indoors, right. then you mean greenhouses are indoor? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because you can con you can you can a greenhouse any enclosed building, including a greenhouse, you're going to contain the odor. But in that situation, if you put up a hoop house, you can choose to put up a hoop house, but you have to, you're still held to the same standard of any other building. That's right. So whether it's a hoop house, uh, a plastic paned greenhouse, or you're going to purify inside, that air inside an old mill building, you still have to yeah. purify it. And scrubbers aren't cheap. I have built several in my time. They were expensive to construct and they're expensive to operate, but they work. That's charcoal, isn't it? They run that through. No, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff. There's charcoal. There's these things that look like hollowed out plastic golf balls that you run a chemical through. Depending what your owner is, what you can how you filter it. You know, if Mr. Aldrich has something to offer as far as the Colorado bylaw, uh, that'd be helpful to us. But I think if, if we limit this to the inside, it's going to alleviate a lot of problems. I, I agree with you, John. You know, and then I, we I'm later on, exactly that. Well, later on, as information comes forward, we can maybe introduce the outside. Yeah. Well, well, outside is like the solution to pollution is dilution. Outside, the solution you know, the to whole pollution, air is going to be dissipating. Right. The, the Every one of your neighbors up there could grow 15 plants in your house. backyard. Right. By law, twelve right. plants. Twelve plants by law in their backyard. So you could have in your backyard many, many marijuana plants growing. No. And you could sm twelve. 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 Yeah, twelve. Right. So how many people up there in uh, Shattuck Road? Look at that development. <laughs> Multiply that times twelve. Or what do you think? Well, Everybody's going to be these growing. These guys are talking about plants? thousands in one location. Though. They're talking about thousands of plants. Oh. Well, I know, I know, but you're you're going to smell 12 plants, and you're if somebody's growing in your backyard. Yeah, sure they're going to smell it. Thousands. Absolutely, no yeah. doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Hadley was a good town. It turned into a bunch of dope addicts. <laughs> Forget it. No. I agree with that. The hey, state side saw, like, saw dollar signs. Tax, tax, tax. What can we say that we we allow the outdoor grow? Multiple places because we changed it. Let's see. Um, <coughs> there was the definition added. Cannabis, the very first one, cannabis cultivation. Uh, yeah, okay. um, on page five, outdoor marijuana cultivation. You never want to cultivate it, so then. That's outdoor one specifically. Pretty much everywhere except in the residential area. Um, and then we talk about other crops. So I, I guess you can still have that in there if it was thrown on the farm. Let's see what else? So, so if you just took outdoor cultivation, wouldn't that eliminate it? <coughs> well, that's one place. There's 30.4.1.1, bottom of page 5, there's a clause about outdoor. Right. So that we had at it, because you asked me to. So we, take out, so we would take this exclude agricultural outside. 30.4.1.1. Just take out the last sentence on that one. But then again, you know, we're jumping to exclude it, Jim. If somebody wants to grow it on 
way down by the Connecticut River. Uh, okay, no one's going to see it, smell it. Joe, no however, there. you're absolutely right, Joe. However, that's the exception. How do we address everybody? I know. Else? I, I so, don't. so rather than say, well, you can do it here, but you can't do it here. Yep. Let's just, ex for the time being, right. like John said, exclude all outdoor. Maybe a few years down the road, we find out, hey, it's not such a problem after all. Maybe and, we can watch other communities. If they do it, they don't have any problems. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so you, uh, I'm just trying to think about this 30.4.1.1 because your concern was allowing um, the growing of other crops. So if somebody has a greenhouse, they you still might want to allow them to grow other crops on their property, right? Right. Oh, why not? Yes. Right. So you might not want to take that whole sentence out. Well, but if they have a greenhouse, they, I mean, you're, you're thinking about someone using half the greenhouse for marijuana and half the greenhouse for heirloom tomatoes or something like that. That's possible. Wouldn't or, that stink up the tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, growing something outside. What the heck would that mix? Any any, of how would that mix? <laughs> Well, I don't. I think we own. I don't think we want to allow multiple uses within a greenhouse. It's either marijuana or it's not. Okay. To keep it clean. If they're going to do it, the profit margins are nowhere near the same. I agree. Right? Yeah. yeah. So they're just right. going to do the marijuana. Tomatoes and marijuana. Yeah. Okay. And this is going to impact other crops tomatoes. that are grown outside. If you want what? Of those Once crops. You can use those That's wind. my concern, actually. Conway uh, has the uh, rig outdoor cultivation. Who does, Joe? Conway. But they have the uh, renewal of special okay, permits. So we, we said this market. excludes agricultural uses associated with other Agricultural crop. uses, right, such as growing other crops. I think you're good then. Yeah, so we just take yeah. out that outdoor. Boss. Outdoor crop. This associate uses associated mm -hmm. with This includes agricultural uses such associated such as growing, crops. Such as growing other crops. Yeah. You take out with outdoor marijuana you can cultivation take out facilities. Too if you, want. Hmm? you could remove associated too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Agricultural this excludes agricultural uses such as growing other crops. Right. Correct. So okay. they could have the same, they could grow yes. crops on the same property. Yes. We got an email from uh, Selectman Christian Stanley. I will address his concerns. Yes. Yeah. Get through the. Um, 30.4.2.8. We just say not visible. We can delete the rest of the paragraph. Cannabis plants, product, and parish should not be visible and, and delete from outside the building. And then delete the rest. I'm sorry, the, 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 entire, the entire rest of the paragraph? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything else before that? I mean, in the ventilation, no, you could take indoor out of there. It's just all going to be indoor. Right. That's 30.4.2.4. Yes. Yep. And this is not going to exclude people from growing it. I mean, okay. it's not going to punish 30, people from growing it outside because the gentleman who was from the Stockbridge Agricultural School who passes himself as, as an authority said it's very susceptible to diseases outside. 30.4, 30 page 7, mm -hmm. 30.4.3.4 outdoor marijuana cultivation facility shall be set I back. Take that, out. take that whole section out? Yeah, read no. What do you think? That's there? what we put that in. Oh, this? 
No, 30 point, this one right here. Take out that whole section. 30.4.3.4. Okay. Is that section on setbacks? 30 point, on page 7. Yeah, I don't have it. So. Oh, okay. That, that, that's the one that says outdoor facilities and setback. If you don't have an outdoor facility. Yeah. Is there, are there, in, the, in the bylaw, are there any setbacks required for any type of facility? For a building, is, there's a, uh, the general setback on, on 50 foot front yard, 15 foot rear, 15 foot side, 50, 50, uh, 40 foot rear, 15 foot side. Churches, schools? There is, a thing, there is a section here on schools. How far from a school that's uh, 300 feet? Okay. Now, are home daycares considered schools? No. Specifically, it mentions schools. Yeah. Like pre, pre, pre K through 12 is well defined in this bylaw. Anything else, like a daycare, a nursery school, a child care facility, or any kind of a church, child care is not included in this. However, when they go for the special permit, we have the authority to say, no, you can't do that, okay? And this is a true special permit. Reporting requirements, so that's okay. Do you have to have a specific reason to say no? Yes. Yeah, you're gonna have, you can't just be whimsical about it, you're gonna have a good reason to say no, you can't do that. I would say you now, can't be arbitrary and capricious. On 30.4.3.4, the one you talk about up, outdoor growing, should we, leak, should we simply take out outdoor marijuana cultivation facility and say marijuana facility shall be set back at least 100 feet from any public way and front and rear setback shall be 50 feet? What do you mean? We can be, yeah. hmm? You can do that, yeah. That's for what? For a greenhouse? Yes. Well, I thought we were we had the the butters three hundred feet. No. So that's three hundred feet from. What do you? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Three point four point three point two. No marijuana establishment should be located on a parcel which is within three hundred feet to the property line. Oh, that's only got to do with schools school. and yes. uh, what you call it? Other facilities. Other facilities. Yeah. So I think on 30.4.3.4, we really want to take out outdoor cultivation. Just leave marijuana facilities shall be set back at least 100 feet from any public way and 50 feet from any front and rear yard, side yard setbacks. Um, so that's kind of flying in the face of the neighbors that are going to be right close to it, putting it up close if the farmer has enough room to move it back to the 300 feet. We don't have a 300 foot setback in here to the property line. It's not 300 feet from a, from a dwelling. It's 300, 300 feet, feet from, from a school, school or another no, facility. I, I hear that. So, but this seems a little inconsistent to say that the the facility should be set back at least 100 feet from the public way, but the front yard set back would be 50 feet. That's Min right. 50 feet minimum. That's I think right. We just say, we just say, let me see, if we, do we define right. marijuana cultivation? Inside, maybe. Rear inside. Okay. Marijuana, we don't. Why is this? Marijuana facility is any kind of, I'm assuming it's going to be any kind of a marijuana thing. Why is this mm -hmm. different than our zoning laws? Exactly, that's what, yeah. Marijuana. Right, that, I think if I have set back to 40 building. feet or 50 feet, why is so this? So we, we don't actually define marijuana facilities. We have outdoor marijuana cultiv cultivation facilities, but we don't have a cultivation facility, do we? We have marijuana cultivator. Cannabis what? cultivation. What I'm saying, you take out outdoor and cultivation, just call it any marijuana facility. What, what number is that? 30.4.3.4? 30 30 yeah, on page 7. Page seven. 
And then you're going to take that one off on page five, the outdoor marijuana. Yeah, we're, we're, going to, we're going to eliminate that's, marrow, that's outdoor that's marijuana. Yeah, that's that's all. All. But the concern is we don't define marijuana facility anywhere. So if you take out outdoor marijuana facility, right, you're you, right. you, you're, uh, maybe just, uh, is that marijuana establishment? Cultivator, okay. So it has to go uh, marijuana establishments. establishments shall be set back at least mm -hmm. on the establishment. Oh, okay. This marijuana establishment is going to be set back how far? 100 feet. Why is that 100 feet? Now, wait a minute. Well, let's think about that one, too. Why is that 100 feet when our bylaws now, require setbacks and less than that? Do we really care if somebody's selling marijuana, like the Sunoco station, is set back 100 feet? Because there's right. no odor. There's no odor coming from right. them. Okay. So we just, def uh, marijuana growing establishment? Well, if it's in a building, it shouldn't matter that. If it, right, because they're not, they're supposed it, to handle all the old. So, so that's true. So I think just maybe just take out the whole section. Take out the whole section. They, they just got to comply with the general bylaw. Because if they're doing what they're supposed to, it's not visible at night with the light, Yes. Not visible to the sky, no, and there's no odors. In theory, it shouldn't matter if you're standing next to it, because except that you've got a big building there, it's not infringing on anything you have. And with the special permit, you'll be able to look at the security plan in advance? We, we will be able to look at the security plan in general. We aren't requiring, we do not want to require detailed security. And we'll explain why in a second. I think explain it now. Be we originally we looked for we wanted detailed security plans. As soon as anybody files detailed security plans, and what does detailed mean is open to interpretation. With us, it becomes public, old record. public records. Anybody oh, right. can look at that detailed security plan and says, "Oh, I know how to break into this thing." Mm -hmm. So all we want to know is you're going to have lighting. Or not. You're going to have security cameras or not. You're going to have a fence or not. The details of what it's going to be, like you're going to have a security camera, that's fine. What kind, how it's going to work, we could care less. Who it ties into. Who it ties into. Yep. That's between you and the confidentiality of the police department if they even want to know. Because, you know, we wouldn't know a good security, well, most of us, including myself, wouldn't know a good security system from a bad one. But doesn't it have to comply with state guidelines? Yes, yes. Right. Yes. And, yes. And, and we'll let the state decide whether it complies. That's right. That's part they, of their they, review. They, remember, they don't need, they apply to us for the zoning bylaw, then they still have to get the permit from the state, which is a whole extremely involved um, uh, process. Yeah, we don't want to know anything more from these people than we know from Walmart, which is basically where your lights are, where your doors are. <clears throat> but beyond that, um, you're on your own to protect your own best so interest. So Sergeant Schultz. So, already. And of course, the instrument transfer and the rest, I know that's going to have anything to do with the open world. Okay. Um, just as a thing, we've got a couple of questions from Selectman Stanley about the bylaw. Does everybody um, have a copy of that? Yeah. And addressed to the planning board and the planning board is not obligated, let's see, here are a couple of notes I have on sections of the proposed bylaw that stand out to me. Sorry that I can't attend tonight's meeting. Section 30.5, the planning board is not obligated to approve an application for a marijuana establishment that it doesn't find is in the best interest of the town and complies with the standards and intent of this bylaw ordinance. Just because the maximum number of special permits for a marijuana establishment haven't been approved. And his question is, if the project meets all the bylaws and we have licenses available, can the rejection be appealed to the select board such that the dispute be mediated and potentially reversed or upheld by another governing body? A special permit, which this is, is only appealable to the court. The selectman or anybody else in town has any authority to overturn a special permit. It's appealed to the court and it follows the legal path. Being a special permit, 
If it complies with the bylaw, okay. And what we want to be addressed is the concerns of the neighbor. This thing is going to be, even though it complies with the bylaw, that's, that's the part of this, uh, if you would, a little bit of a leeway that the planning board has. We can't be arbitrary and capricious. Those are the words of the state on of issuing a special permit. But we can be consistent as far as making sure that, well, it isn't good for the neighborhood for some reason. And then we can say no. And those reasons, although are, are a little bit in a gray area, as long as we're consistent in applying that, then, you know, it goes to the courts. And most of the time, like I said, as long as it's arbitrary and capricious, usually a planning board or zoning board will prevail. So spe usually. specifically in 30.5, the language requires specific findings by the planning board in support of denial. 30.6. 30.5. That's the, the preamble application requirement. Okay. Um, and the findings are listed in 30.6. Oh, okay. Right. No, findings are in 30.6. Okay. Yeah. But the, the concern the selectman had was 30.5. So uh, 30.5 uh, does say the approval is up to the discretion of the planning board based on uh, selecting establishments that it finds are in the best interest. So we have to go through a a specific a rubric, if you will, to um, to make that determination. So it's not discretionary in the sense that, nah, I don't like your project. We have to have a reason for it. And that basically is just another way of explaining what Jim was saying, but to, you can't be arbitrary and capricious. The other question that Selectman Stanley has in section 30.5.8, and it says, in addition to what is normally required in a site plan, details showing all exterior proposed security measures for the marijuana establishment, including lighting and fencing, ensuring the safety of employees and patrons, and to protect the premises from theft or other criminal activity. He asks, can we add that the security review be held in executive session and that security plans will not be part of the public record? My concern is that security measures could potentially be bypassed just by looking at what is on the public record. And no, we can't hold that in, in executive session because the state has extreme rules on what can be held in executive session. And simply saying, well, our security is not an executive session item. And as far as being bypassed, you know, again, that's an issue for the state to be looking at. And we really don't want any of this to be public record. Right. We want it to be confidential to this developer, whoever that might be, and whoever the party, other parties are, because we don't want anybody to be able to look at it for obvious reasons. So, no, it can't be executive session material. Are, are growers going to be able to process and package the marijuana that grow in the facility they're growing it at? If you look at mar marijuana cultivator, it's an entity licensed to cultivate, process, and package marijuana. We went over, we went over this one of our meetings. The idea of process and packaging was, I believe, to take the seeds and not to process process them into. We had that. So right. is the yeah, marijuana, right, right, under, uh, if you go down three three definitions, Mike, is a marijuana processor packager, process or processing, to harvest. It defines what process, marijuana process means: harvest, dry, cure, trim, and separate parts of the cannabis or marijuana plant by manual or mechanical means. Except that it not shall not include any manufacturing as defined in CMR 500.002. But, but we do say that a marijuana cultivator can package it. Process and package marijuana for sale. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to package. How else they going to? How else they going to? Um, well, my question is, can they pa can they package it in the grow facility? They'd have to do it someplace else. No, they can package it in the grow facility. Yeah. So yes. they're going to be drying it in the grow facility also. Probably. 
Does this have to be? I think the, I think the, the yeah, I don't think so. I, on the, yeah, on the, yeah, really they can't. Know. They can't try the grow facilities. On the bottom of right. page three, marijuana cultivators. Does that need to be changed at all? Yeah, they they can't dry it in the grow right. facility. Wow. Yeah, I actually. Yeah, I don't think you'd you'd, you'd uh, dry tobacco in the uh, hot house, would you see? Well, it depends. I mean, you can, but uh, who's, who's to out. say that this building isn't divided into a right. grow facility, grow area, and a drying area? Parts. I'm sure they have that. Are they going to dry it in kilns? I don't know how you, I don't know I mean, how you I do it. Either, either air dry it or put it in a kiln, kiln and dry it. Well, they, they may just have it, have it two, facil two, two, two units in one building. Yeah. I would think that's the way they're going to do it. There's a lot of information about coming out here and nobody knows what to do with it. That's exactly one of the things we want to get out here is what don't <coughs> we know and <coughs> is this bylaw not ready? You know, yeah, well, nobody has their heart set that we want to do this next month. There's a few things we want to do. We guys we got the by we got the two general bylaws that are on the board, correct? <coughs> so that will take care of the limiting of the number and the general bylaw on the <coughs> um, open consumption of marijuana. But as far as growing it and selling it, you know, maybe we're not ready. I had a thought this here. Time. Maybe we could uh, question on sound if you've got scrubbers going all the time and if you've got of course you've got to have ventilation for the plants themselves. Uh, and then if you've got some kind of a drying facility, just just a question on that. I mean, what what's too much? I mean, if you're hearing that all night long, we, we, we have we have a sound bylaw, and we have a sound we have sound into our general bylaw that part of site plan approval. So they be aware of that if you'd be checking them on that. Within the site plan approval, we have a sound at the at the uh, boundaries. Okay. And basically, it says that it should be pretty much not audible, and sound is measurable. We went through a whole big thing with that, with the uh, the kennel, the kennel, the kennel across from uh, Winesick Nursery, and people wanted, you know, we talked about decibels, and people were saying, you know, some of the some of the abutters wanted zero decibels, and those that are familiar with sound readings and. I, from a prior job, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Zero decibels is impossible unless you were in a soundproof room. And so at one of the meetings, I brought in an actual sound meter. It was in this room, and I measured the sound. Everybody was quiet, and it was 50 decibels. And that all the noise was coming from these fluorescent lamps. So once they understood what 50 meant, they were much better um, appreciative of the numbers that we put forward. I think we put forward something like 65 or 70. I mean, normal voice is probably in an order of 70 plus. And they've had absolutely no issues with sound and everything else over there because they, they went through some good measures of making sure it was soundproof. So, yeah, we, we want to make sure that you're right. Scrubbers do, scrubbers work by fans. I and mean, you want to make sure that, uh, like heating and ventilation equipment, isn't you know humming all night long, year round, especially in a cold weather when it really becomes noticeable. Yes, sir. Do you happen to know what OSHA limits as far as bathroom sound over like an eight-hour period? Oh, that yeah, it's extreme. At OSHA OSHA eight-hour time exposure limits is something like uh, I think it's 85 decibels time weighted average. Believe me. You don't want, to, don't want to listen to something at 85 decibels for eight hours. Um, you wouldn't sleep. <laughs> it's, uh, the normal voice is around, I'm going to say 70 to 75. Every 10 decibel increase is a doubling of the volume or the intensity. So 85 is pretty irritable. And I think 120 decibels is something that will actually bring you to your knees. It'll hurt your ears so much. Are you going to do anything with this? I was going to ask. On bottom of 
paid the uh, page four marijuana. Page three. No, page three. Page three, the very last bottom one. Do we need to exchange anything on that regarding the outdoor growing or anything? Or is that okay? Yeah, but it specifically says an entity license to cultivate, to cultivate. And we're not allowing that. Yeah, you, know, you are. We're just not outdoor cultivation. Yeah. So I think that's fine. Okay. Taken up Maybe Jim, we should have taken up a uh, collection to send the uh, at least the chairman of the planning board out to Colorado. No, the chairman doesn't want to Colorado. <laughs> Let's send them out there anyway. Let's send them out there anyway. It would be good for us. <laughs> okay, a couple of tickets so for the Broncos game. <laughs> well, maybe not we're talking about that. Okay, so just to review here, quickly, yeah. on page five, we're going to completely take out outdoor marijuana cultivator. On the bottom of the page, we're going to 30.4.1.1. We're going to leave the very last sentence in that section. This excludes agricultural uses, such as growing other crops, and take out associated with outdoor marijuana cultivation facilities. Um, on page six, on 30.4.2.4, we're going to simply say all marijuana establishments shall be ventilated in such a manner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, the signage will go into 30.4.2.5 as another sentence. Top of page seven, we're simply going to change that to be 30.4.2.6. Eight. Eight. Uh, eight. I'm sorry, point eight, yeah. And we're going to leave cannabis plants, products, and paraphernalia shall not be visible from outside the building, and the entire rest of that paragraph is out. Mm -hmm. um, middle of the page, 30.4.3.4 is gone so in its entirety. Um, that's that going to change. That's going to change those lower numbers. Oh yeah, and, that, and, and, and change the bottom. The next yeah. two numbers to be go up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, page. So Ten. We want to simply renumber the 11th to 13th in the very last section. Mm -hmm. I don't think I missed anything, right? I. <coughs> you have something else? No, I don't. Okay. I'll get all that done and to David for tomorrow night's and like meeting. Do you, are we going to add a uh, proven review? Yes. A periodic review? Yes, 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 yes. That would be that would be just straight out of the uh, home occupation or the yeah, just bed and one. breakfast. Yeah. That would be added to 30.4.4.3. Is that just for the outdoor growing facility? Or is that Perry, a uh, facility? review for how many years? For how many years? Uh, how many years can do it for? We'll keep it the same. Well, you know, we verbiage is with the, the other alternative is just to leave it to the building, the zoning enforcement <coughs> officer, but we'll probably have to get a bigger zoning enforcement department. 30. So we're going to add the annual review. 30 to 30.4.4.3. It, it already talks about the written annual right, that, yeah, report. That's right, that, yeah. And, and uh, demonstrated continued compliance with the condition. So after that, then you would just say. I'll get the word. I'll get, yeah, I'll get. I'll get the wording out of one of the other two. Yeah, and how many reviews does this have to go through? As long as they stay in business? No. I believe we once had, again, if it if it. I, I think the same the criteria as we used before. If it uh, doesn't I, I have any the other objection. bylaws had it for reviewed after one year and then after three two years, years, two or years or three years. I, right. I forget. It, it, we had in the other bylaws like the first year was a one year renewal. Then I think it was two years after that. I'm, I'm, off the top of my head, I can't. I, I don't know exactly the terms, but I would say after three reviews, if they're behaving, we should 
basically the, the third the third review should be a, a, a permanent one. I think they still have to report to the state hmm? anyways. They still have to report yeah. to the state. Yeah, whatever we had before, it was approved by Well, the just state. to let the people know, <coughs> maybe you know, but they don't know. Well, and I, off the top of my head, I don't know what it was on the other ones. I've, I've got to look under, our, under the old bylaw to see. I think it was okay. one year, then three years, but uh, two or three yeah, two doesn't or three. make any difference. Yeah. Any other questions out there for the time being? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Zabranek's question earlier is point you made to raise. Is there no appetite on the board in general to uh, ask for or, or require a 300 foot buffer zone for the facility, the growing facilities, greenhouses, from uh, existing residences? If it's a, my, my personal opinion, that if it's complied with the bylaw, I would say there is not. Okay. Uh, so, is it one of the easiest ways to avoid having a revolving door with the zoning enforcement officer in terms of people complaining about lights, people complaining about odors, is to cause a potentially noxious facility, which these are, to be located? A little farther back than you would normally, than you would be required to locate another residence. I mean, the, as it is now, we're treating this marijuana grow facility as if it was a, another residence being built in the neighborhood or any other right. right. We are. Okay, so, is, is there rec no recognition on the board that this really is a, 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 a potentially a very noxious facility? So we, we we run into another problem with that if we start creating. Uh, specific zoning by default we are excluding certain properties from being considered um, so that, that's correct I yes so well, as my property was considered not suitable for a munitions factory when I built it correct it was for a residence correct and I'm saying this isn't similar to a residence or it isn't similar to a grow house for somebody there to lose tomatoes it's a stinking marijuana facility which is still illegal under federal law so as its very nature it is not just because it's a criminal enterprise and we're saying we're going to Ex treat it as if it was yeah. a residence except that right? under massachusetts law no, no, yeah, but massachusetts law does not trump federal law. well it, it massachusetts you know it law was, trumps massachusetts zoning no. so i think that's but you are but, but but massachusetts has not said you can't set it farther back they have merely said that it will be up to you to make sure that your existing townspeople aren't harassed by these groves, which is why we're not considering an agriculture. But we, but we don't know what the right setback is. Just because you set it back 300 feet, what does that mean? It's 300 feet back. Do you, do you think there's less of a chance of, of, of odors and light migrating onto the neighbor's properties if it's 300 feet back as opposed to 50 feet back? If they comply with the bylaw, I don't think it matters. And this is the I'm case here. Is, can't we can't we try to be proactive and not have people calling Tim Neidhart constantly with problems by requiring it to be set back? Some how many people that have expressed a desire to do this will be excluded with this 300 foot? I mean, Mr. Sazisky raised an excellent point. There's plenty of places having at the honey pot where you could be a thousand feet away. I'm just saying, how about the, the standard of butter distance, 300 feet? I I, I think that's more than reasonable. But, uh, I, I don't see. I don't see any reason why. I don't see any reason why that isn't a reasonable thing. The honey pot. You probably wouldn't want it because that's in a flood overlay. Why would somebody and spend you could, all you that money? You could put it in. It, it, it would be pretty. Right, but, but that's. You, that yeah. was sorry. Maybe <laughs> that was a bad thing. Have you uh, have you heard of any communities doing the the setback three hundred feet from from other residences? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What are they? What's their? I. But they haven't implemented it yet. But that. No. But is there an average? Mean, median, or mode? Three hundred was recommended um, in the model bylaw, actually. Okay. It's, maybe we should include it. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if it, it's it's going to be a big farmer, if it's big farmer will have 
sufficient land to put it back 300 feet. Jimmy, yes. if, is this if this building that's going to be created, if they're going to grow in-house, whatever, so is that going to be treated as a conventional building in town in that if I have a 100,000 square foot grow facility, I need 200,000 square feet of parking? Are you getting cute? No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm trying to help him out in, in that. I thought you were getting cute. No, no. That would, that would limit. I was just checking. In and of itself, where something could be built, although it would not necessarily help. Well, if, if you this are this a farmer, you would have the is, ability. This is not to, a farmer, though. This, this, this is not agricultural. This They're not exempt. Well, I know, and, but and I, off the top of my head, I would say yes. Okay. Although we get into that little sort of dead end about uh, so how do we define marsh? As long as you don't throw the Dover Amendment out, I'm okay. Well, actually, if it were agricultural, the Dover Amendment would fly, believe it or not. And it's not... Yeah, it would fly with you, not with me. <laughs> no. But the, I, the only reason I raise the question is that will certainly limit the size of a parcel that can be built on for a grow facility. That's absolutely true. God, you're smart. What, well, you're smarter than you look sometimes. Why, yeah. why would you have two for one parking for someone that's growing marijuana? So you know, I think you should pass a special right. exemption in the bylaw at the time. Well, we're writing a new bylaw I, I here, so maybe that could be some thrift. Field, field trips. Do that. I would, I would just have to see this use the same requirements that in the model. That would be a, basically, be a, that would be a, uh, That'd be an eight acre site minimum. <clears throat> but you're writing a new bylaw here. Yeah. Why does that new bylaw have to allow two for one parking for growing marijuana? What that would do is that would take care of that gentleman's concerns without putting a lot of the words into the bylaw. If put, you, put, put words in the bylaw, not hard. 300 feet on this chart instead of 50. That's, that's easy to do, and it's within your power to do it. And it would well serve, I think, any community that, that's going to have one of these facilities. So I think to not include it uh, does a disservice to any existing residents. What would the negative be if it were a 300-foot setback? Well, if we require the two for one parking, unless, unless we, again, there's, unless it's exempted. If you don't exempt it from the two for one parking, 300 feet would be irrelevant. No, that, that's not true. Because you can still park. Up front. Uh, you can still have the building 50 feet from the front line. You can't park in there. In that right. But we could make them put the building to the back if they have seven and a half acres, if they have an eight acre site. Do you have the authority to do that? Yes, under the special permit you do. And I'm not being smart. I'm no, I understand. That's that's no, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not thinking you are. But yeah. you know, once again, you don't have to pave it. That's right. Right. No, I get that. And to to Johnny's point, I think that you have no choice but to require the two for one because there are other businesses in this town that certainly don't require two for one parking in order to operate their business. I deal but the bylaw requires. It and I, I understand that you don't require it to be built, but you still have to have the Space. area the in order to provide for it. <coughs> what did we tell Brett Banis he had to pay the town to build that building? Three hundred thousand dollars, four hundred thousand dollars. So, so the three hundred feet. Are we going to put it to a vote, or are we going to think about it, or what, nobody's made a motion? We're not really going to lie. So, a couple of factors here. Do we, if we do the three hundred foot, um, we need to put in. I, I, that's, I'm trying to think. If we have to if we have to change the density table as well. I would say no. I think we could. It, it does say that uh, it already says additional dimensional and density regulations may be 
may apply as required in other applicable overlay district special permit and our general regulation yeah. section of the bylaw. Yeah, we, we don't have uh, senior housing in there. There's, there's no setback okay. a little bit different. Okay. So, all right. We can do it within the text of this then. Okay. Um, so, if you're going to do it, I would say we should do it under 30.4.3.4, the one we took out, and simply say marijuana establishment shall be set back at least 300 feet Cultivation um, establishment because we don't want to make it 300 feet for the selling. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Right. We don't want to make a, a selling facility back 300 feet. But that's only going to be in the business and industrial zones, anyways. So let's just be sure we marijuana. This is nice for growing. For growing. We've already struck out 30.4. So it'll be set back 300 feet. Was it for bottom? Marijuana, marijuana cultivator. So we have a marijuana establishment which includes a marijuana cultivator, but that also includes retail. Right. So right. we want to say Craft Marijuana Cooperative, Marijuana Cultivator, and Marijuana Microbusiness shall be set back 300 feet. So those are the three that are allowed in an ag residential. Is there any repercussion to doing that for a business to comply with that? No, because marijuana retailers are separate. <coughs> No, I'm talking about... Well, yeah, sure, there is a repercussion. You're going to tell some people that, uh, I'm sorry, you can't, uh, you can't play in this game because your lot's not big enough. You don't, you don't have a 300 foot setback. And to be fair, it has to be 300 foot setback from the property lines too, probably. Sure. So, um, not everybody has... Uh, so yeah, it awful. has to have 300 foot setbacks on the sides. You're probably talking a thousand by a thousand. Yeah, not everybody a thousand. has a thousand by a thousand piece of property. So somebody is going to, you know, somebody's going to tell you no, you cannot repurpose the welding shop because I, I got some farmland for sale. So yeah, that's the reason for qualifying. Yeah. Can this be? You can't get there can this here. be conducted in the uh, the floodplain or anywhere? Yes. Yep. Yes. Commer new commercial structures are allowed in the floodplain. It's just new residences aren't allowed. Yeah, so, so you could grow you could grow marijuana in the floodplain. Aquifer recharge area. Yes. Yep. Yes. yes. Old, but not on APR land. No. So I suppose we could, uh, actually, if we're going to put in the larger setbacks, I would say maybe we need to craft something about parking, too. Uh, because I don't know if, if we're calling for large setbacks um, for, for uses that will have limited parking demand. We might as well just address it. That, um, not quite sure how at the moment, but. Well, if you have that big of a parcel, yeah, you have enough space. Two for two one for parking, parking is irrelevant. Right, because you, you, your parking will be in your 300 foot setbacks. Right. You more than likely meet your requirements. Yeah, you're, you're going to have more. You're not going to need all that parking, right. so you can farm the rest of it anyways. Although, again, the language of the parking bylaw does talk about availability. Um, any uh, building here and after constructed or modified, altered, expand, expanded for limited business, business or industrial should be located so as to provide two to one. Um, so this will fall into a gray area. It, 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 we can address it. We can add in language about uh, well, we're allowing it also in agricultural residential. So you could simply put into the same thing that. You shall comply with section 
motion. Make a motion. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. To uh, add the Craft Marijuana Cooperative, Marijuana Cultivator, and Marijuana Microbusiness shall be set back at least 300 feet from any public way, no, from any adjoining properties. Any, any boundary line. Yeah. No. Any boundary line. Any bound, okay, any boundary line. Public way and or boundary lines. Well, the public way is a boundary line as well. So yep. you just make it boundary line to cover. And so that was for craft, craft marijuana. It's second in the yeah. Craft marijuana, <coughs> marijuana cultivator, and marijuana microbusiness. Micro what? Micro business. That's the motion. Okay. <clears throat> marijuana micro business facilities. Uh, this is this is this is marijuana micro business. That's the with the, the definition in the bylaws. Craft marijuana micro business. Craft marijuana cooperative, and marijuana cultivator. What section do you put that in? We're going to put it under the 30.4.3.4, the one we told you eliminated. Okay. Second the motion. I already seconded. Here we go. Seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing no, uh, no, none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm going to oppose it. I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's <coughs> too much. But that's fine. The motion passes four to one. <coughs> Do we want to say anything about parking then? <coughs> um, yeah, I, I don't want to just leave it as a gray area. So um, um, we could simply add another section, 30.4. Point three point seven parking shall comply with section five point four point one. But you got three hundred foot setback like right. No, I understand the parking space is there, but I think in this case for it's just it that's silly. Uh, that's just way too much parking. So uh, I think we can tailor it to the specific since we're Within this particular bylaw, we can make an exception for it's going to have to be set back anyway. So, in, uh, in the end of this bylaw, you, right? you prefer, yeah, you're heading you in the prefer, right direction. You would prefer the build. farmer to grow other agricultural crops on the setback, I think. They could, or, or right. they could, they, sure, they, they yeah, could. absolutely, yeah, sure, they yeah. can. It says right in the bylaw they yeah. can do that. Yeah, they, it doesn't have to be dedicated to grass, no. Yeah, but at some point, at some point, you know, the, the parking bylaw obviously needs some tweaking going forward. But at some point, it's just ridiculous to say that uh, you need, um, you know, 20,000 square feet of parking. Even, even if you could provide it with reserve parking, it's ridiculous to say you need 20,000 square feet of parking for a 10,000 square foot growth facility that has two employees or six employees. Um, I think it'd be, and unfortunately, let's see, do we have The only place where we talk about parking in spaces instead of this, square feet. This, maybe we could just say one for one. This is compatible because it's not going to be able to be converted we, into another type, one one. and not going to be able to convert it into another type of facility. For example, on Route 9, we had a meat market that became an auto store that became a echelon cafe that. They had enough parking for auto store. They had enough parking for the meat market, but 
not for echelon after they added on the well, extra so, the facility. You know, what is going to happen to a facility later when you say, well, I don't need all that parking, but all of a sudden they sell the property and then we're stuck. But, but so we're, we don't have that dilemma here. That's where I'm going right. with this. Okay, so I'll make a motion to require one-to-one one one parking for uh, craft marijuana, marijuana cultivator, and marijuana microbusiness. Second. They don't have to. They don't have to build this. Is no, they just have to provide like, right. right space for it. Right, but just try and tie what it. What say? One to one parking. What? What, what, what is yeah. that? What, were your, what was your word for it? To require one to one parking for craft marijuana, marijuana cultivator, and marijuana micro business. You probably should put something about square footage in your building rather than just one to one. Yeah. yeah. Might not yes. One that. square foot. So I'm, I'm depending on Jim to. <laughs> yeah, put this into English. Uh, or, um, I'll, I'll, I'll look at 5.1. Yeah. 5.4.1 for the uh, board. I'll just do it. Sid Park may provide off street parking area equal yeah. to equal to the floor area. Co op. Cultivator. Off street. Parking. Micro. Equal yeah. to <coughs> just, just give me the leeway to reward it to make it sure. more sense. Yeah. Okay. We have that motion. And that will be five point thirty point four point three point seven. Second. Okay. Any other discussion on that one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Five to zero. There's a lot of tonight. Yeah. What? First of all, thank you people for coming here because you, this is new to us. This is not something that we even have an expert on. We can go someplace and say, you know, what have you done? Because anybody in the state is new to it. And to say this is going to be perfect is obviously a dream. It's going to require some tweaking down the road. We want to make sure that the first one, if nothing else, it's too restrictive and we can ease up because it's very difficult to make something more restrictive down the road as opposed to, oh, we made a mistake, it needs to, you know, make it a little bit easier. That's usually not too bad to do. If we start trying to make something later restrictive, it's a very uphill battle and people really start screaming, you took away my rights. And in some cases, they're probably right on that comment. So um, I think we've made some good changes here tonight. Thank you. Hey, Joe, Thank I you. think your idea of sending him to Colorado <laughs> is a real good idea the more I think of it. Okay. Um, we'll see you in a month. In a month. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Okay. I will give you a Thank copy you. when I change this as soon as I change it, which will be tonight. Okay. And then in a month. I don't know if we want to get back to some of the other things we're yes. working on. Yeah. Definitions. Uh -huh. And MS. MS. MS4 would probably be the next thing we should look at. We had talked about waiting. What is the state doing summer? with that? Because of the state. The state is holding off on that? Right. Ah, okay. Well, let's so go to the town administrator is might have something to say. We're, we're gonna, our, next, our next topic to work on with PVPC would be MS4, but the state has put off MS4 implementation. Uh, that's not true. That's not true. Uh, US EPA implemented it as of uh, July 1st, 2018. So we've already filed the notice of intent with the state. We've already done our GIS mapping. So, working on the bylaws would be the next step. Okay. Well, we have them, them ready, but they, there are some changes that still may be made. Um, I'll have to ask the others in my office who, you know, okay. are more knowledgeable on that. Okay. That, that's that's right. what they had recommended. That okay. Made, okay. So, look, look, look at the change that, that were made or need to be made, and we'll, between that and definitions will be the next two topics. Yep. Okay. Pref preferably MS4 would be, be first. Okay. okay. I think the definition I'm pretty ready to go to. Okay. <laughs> if, I, if I am in fact wrong and the state has uh, deferred it for a while, please let me know. I'll be thrilled out of my mind. No, I think it's just some changes that are still going to be made. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
I've got three people that want a copy of the bylaws when I make the changes. Is there anybody else? No? Okay. That's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exotic Auto. We're here. Okay. Have a good night, Tom. Okay. I will not be participating. Good night. Good night. I'll catch you from home. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Do you get Bill, you want to take notes? No. No, no, he's not taking notes. Oh, okay. You are. Okay. I'll let Mike take the notes. Better handwriting. What's the matter with you? You get paid to I take them. I took the last time. what? You get paid to take them. take them. Mike. My cursive is You get paid bad. nothing. You got to earn your key. My cursive is pretty bad. He's got to earn his key. By default. I don't know, Johnny. You're the uh, you're the junior member of the board. Johnny's got good. I'm the junior member of the board. That's how I got you stuck. don't want to hear from this junior member. That's how I got stuck doing. You guys that. get paid the big bucks. Earn your key. So I'm saying. When you have 45 years on the board, then you can start talking. Hey, you collect 10 grand for health insurance. I collect nothing for people. No, it's not 10 grand. Yeah. You, you're like Scott Merzbeck. You have a tendency to make news <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, next meeting, I'm going to get that true fact for you. Okay. Okay, I'll make okay, a public boys. announcement. Settle down. Hold on to what? Settle down. Are you my keeper? Sometimes I have. Oh, okay. Yes. That's a good job. Meeting. Hey, it's a tough okay. job. Some of you do it. True. Okay. Very true. Okay. So what you see before you is a revised site plan based on the input from the board from the last meeting. So basically what it boils down to is I had 10 cars for sale and 5 cars for repair on the north side of the building. Now there are 5 cars for sale, 5 cars for repair. A net loss of five cars there. The remaining parking has stayed the same. Uh, you wanted green space. Yeah, you wanted to see where there, a dumpster would go. Okay. So the dumpsters on the south end of the building. Uh, that way, the business can use it, and if need be, the residents can use it as well. Um, green space on. The intersection of Cummins Road and River Drive. I think that will help a lot in delineating where the cars can and cannot drive. Right now, that being the time of the year it is, and it's going to be a while till the appeal period what? is up and whatnot. That's probably not going to happen. Understand this year? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the area that you want labeled as no parking. Yep. striped or whatever so I yep. show it as something like that now the issue came up with the potential for a street sign and one can fit in this corner being 20 feet away from River Drive 20 feet away from Cummins Road okay uh, I put a note on here proposed freestanding sign no more than 40 square feet we don't have a design yet. Design would have to come back before the board to get approval before it could be installed. Same thing, there's two signs on the building, 20 square feet maximum each for a total of no more than 40 square feet. Uh, again, we don't have the design. We can come back before the board to show you what that sign would look like. And then lights on the building they have to be downward casting. Uh, Paul has not picked out a design yet. We have to come back for the board to show the board what that's going to be. Okay. Uh, and I think 
That is everything. The uh, Agrovites, uh will remain on the north side of the property? I don't see why not. You don't have any plans to take the Arborvitaes out. They're on the east side, aren't they? They are on the east side, yes. Uh, yeah, they're, on, they're here. So that's, yeah, the back, the back line. Trees to remain. Yeah. Do you really need that much signage? I mean, this is not room nine. I mean, you're going to see the garage. You know, just a thought. Well, you, you get it from coming from the north on this side of the building. What, what's, a, what's allowed by the yeah, building? Yeah, the bylaw allows for course. it. So, I know yeah. it allows, but just saying, uh, it's not like you're looking, you're not going to find it if you're looking for it. All right, that's a, just a comment. Mm -hmm. Who's actually going to run this? Um, my son. <coughs> Hours of operation. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, what was the time? 8.30 to 5.30. I think when we were here last time, it was set up till 11 p.m. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, just oh, want to make sure oh, that. 8.30 to what? 5.30. 5.30. And I, I know, he's out of his current business at 5.30. I know I drive by it most days when I go home and he's, he's gone already. So. Uh, Hours of operation going to be, what were they going to be? 8.30 to 5.30. 8.30 and 5.30. 8.30 Did you get, find any information on repairs? You know my husband's dead. I found some information on, I can probably get a person to tell you stuff, but I found some parts in the box, so I know that that would, I was hoping that would make sense to, to know that you bought Traffic parts Chevrolet. to Chevrolet, okay, to you bought something June 2013. Yeah, I did not do a repair in the last year. I sold it to a couple of pieces. Okay. So he had been doing repairs there. Yes. But he certainly wasn't putting all this stuff into his own car. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was still working on repairing that building. That garage was not in primo shape, as most of you know. But it was a whole lot better than when uh, <coughs> the yeah, former owner had it, I'll tell you. Yeah. I grew up up the street from there. I remember yeah, yeah. it was never in good shape when the former yeah. owner ran it. I know, and my sweetheart would have had it really finished by okay. now or doing well, but it just, you can't do it when you're done. And I'm not a car person, so. Well, he certainly would like the exotic auto and their manager to sign an agreement with this board that the vehicles, whatever the vehicle number's for sale, the vehicles for repair, customer vehicles, employee vehicles. And why I say that, his current location, nobody figured well he would be to the max. And if he needed any changes, he would have to come into this board or he would forfeit his site plan review and his class two license. You agree to that? Absolutely. Good. Now, just to be clear, you've got five cars for sale, five for repair. My personal opinion is you've got a space for ten cars. Yeah. Whether you have seven new and three for repair, or seven for repair and three for new is irrelevant to me as a planning board member it's as long point. as your total cars right. don't exceed ten. Ten. Yeah. Ten, okay. Any combination of those two for ten, I'm good with. But now, if inside we have cars inside, it, it, that's this is the exterior. Okay, seriously. Yeah, inside, you can put the cars whatever. Yeah, whatever you. I mean, you're only going to fit. You're only going to fit. Yeah, about five or five. I'm going to say about four or five cars inside. Okay. Right. Okay. But outside, we need ten. To, right. to Johnny's concern, yeah, you're going to. Approve if you approve this, you're going to do so based on 
the site plan. Correct. So the site plan dictates where cars can be, how many they are. Yeah. So that's just, I mean, I, and I hear what you mean. You, he, I, want him, to, I want him to hang that up in his shop so they refer to that, that they don't stray off of that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Well, as I said. I, I've had calls of his facility on Route 9. Packed to there's not an inch to spare there. I don't want to see this lot mm -hmm. in North Hadley end up the same way. Understood. Understand? Absolutely. Agree? Agree. I think we'll be fair with you. Yeah, You'll be right for the town. I will. Right. So, could I ask a question about the, uh, the lighting? Um, is it going to be on a timer and go off at a certain point? You're open until 5.30. I understand there is a security interest, but are we going to keep the whole thing illuminated all night? Well, so the lights doesn't have the front. They will stay on because we have cars for sale. This for the security purpose. But the inside lights will be off. And we'll try to keep as low lights as we can because, of course, they're neighbors. Does that sound like it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 No lights were in any of the houses. And if there is, please just tell me that it will be done. Anything that worries you? 10 total of any of those houses. Power they just get mixed. Your customer, which is in the front, and two employees on the side. Yeah. So his son's running that, so he signs it, his son signs it. Okay. So, Jim, I have one other question. Sure. When you advertise this, you advertise, well, you check, just check the legal notice. What yeah, he said they were relocating. No, but what do we advertise for? Let me hear you up. Uh, we have a very two last subdivision. The F second app for spe special permit site plan approval to relocate an existing 2,422 square feet building at 373. At 373 River Drive, limited business zone, and the applicant shall be, the plans and applicant will be reviewed in the town clerk's office. Okay, so I was just thinking of this. I, I, I probably should have caught it sooner, too. And we all probably should have caught it sooner, but limited business, that's a special permit, too. Do we need to do a special permit from uh, a limited business special permit? Hmm. That's a good question. I mentioned it said limited business. What is the bylaw say? Yes, it, it maybe could be construed as, as just a change of use rather than something new. But um, so we're actually doing this for your your good because we don't want to create an unforced error here. Um, if it's something that has to be re-advertised uh, and re-voted. That's cheaper than going to court over. Well, if he's a grandfathered use, then it's not a new use because a new auto repair station <coughs> is not permitted. Mm -hmm. So I would look at this as a site plan approval of a grandfathered use. Mm -hmm. Because the repair shop is not permitted. Okay. Okay. I, I think I, yeah, I think, I think that's all right. Permitted, but it was permitted previously, and how yes. do you know it was permitted? 
she she showed us she showed us repair slips of of of, of, of her husband doing repairs, and, that, and also the sale of cars. So yeah, yeah. I think maybe the question you're asking: How do we know it was originally permitted? Yeah, just because that used to be a business district right up to that point. Okay. In yeah. fact, originally, Route 47, the entire length of 47 up to the Sutherland Town line was business, the same zoning as Route 9. Okay. So, it was, so a, it, was, it was a, once upon a time, that was a bona fide business and a bona fide business zone. The, the zone from Cummins Road to the Sunderland line was eliminated many years ago. And likewise, many years ago, the business zone from the, Sunderland, from the Cummins Road to the intersection of Rocky Hill Road, or no, um, to, uh, what is that? Uh, Regish's building was changed from business to limited business. That was done in 1987. Okay. okay. So that was once upon a time, of, <laughs> excuse me, it was a business zone. So he was legal at one, I mean, he was legal at one time and he's a grandfathered business there. No. Okay. Uh, and they've continued to use it, although not wide open and stuff like that, but it was, a, you know, up until recently when her husband passed away. So within the last two years, it had been used. And she showed us repair slips that, like I said, he certainly was buying this stuff for his own car. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So uh, just to clarify, so the continued use of the property, is there a requirement for it to still be grandfathered? Say it again now. The, the fact that it's been continuously used is required for it to still be grandfathered? Yes. Yes. If, if, it's, if it's gone into non-use for a period of more than two years, you lose your grandfathering. If you continue to use it, you are a pre, what they call a pre-existing pre grandfathered use. And, and so, um, forgive me for not understanding, but what, what makes it have been in use for the last couple of years. The fact that her husband, two year, less than two years ago, had been selling cars and doing repairs out of it. She showed us some slips that he had sold some vehicles and he had done some repairs. Class two licenses have to yeah. required to keep a logbook. It, 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 again, it doesn't have to be you know massive amounts. Right. Some kind of a business being run there, which which is what had been running there for years. Um, save this grandfathering, not the scale, but simply the youth, the actual something being done. There's no requirements under the class two license for amount of cars. You can sell one car a year and that's perfectly fine. Or none. Right, yeah. or none. Just he, he may have had a permit to, to store, let's say, six vehicles on his property or ten vehicles. But if he only sold one, that was his prerogative to only sell one a but year. But back then, there was no limit on yeah. none of that. But is it, so is that the story? So they've sold at least one car in, yes. in the last two years? Or yes, whatever? correct. More than one. More than one. He actually sold, I want to say, about, I want to say three or four, or something like that, in a year he had, been, he had sold. He was, that, he, in that site? Yeah, well, what it was, he was a antique car fanatic, if you would. Oh. He wasn't repairing your typical local Chevy, local Ford, local Toyota. He was dealing with old cars, restoring them inside the garage and selling them kind of by word of mouth or other advertising. So he wasn't putting them out front because he wasn't, you know, not everybody wants an old antique vehicle. That's, that's kind of a unique market, but that's what he was working on. And that was fine. And you don't park them machines outside anyways. Yeah. So that's why you didn't see a lot of activity, but it was all 90, I would say 95% of it was inside. And, you know, it was kind of a, there was, it was a very quiet business, therefore. Okay, anything else? Um, no, no, the other thing is just the details on sort of, um, you know, so, so the Lunar Cars is down the site, right? That's, okay. Correct. And, and for the lights, like how much, uh, how much light are we expecting? Well, so, he, I mean, he seems reasonable, right? But right. He, he's, he's going to come, he's gonna come back to us with the lighting details. First of all, the light exposure cannot exceed one foot candle at the property, so he's not very far from the property line. 
So it's going to have to be very subdued lighting. It's going to be down lighting. It's not going to be something that as you drive by, like you can see in some kind of some lights as you drive by, they're not really putting out a foot candle of the property, but the glare of the bulb, um, you can see. So what we really look for is what we call shoebox lighting. And it's typically a fixture that just shines light straight down. So you'll see the light on a building, but it's not going to be like a bulb looking at a light bulb. He's going to come back to us with the details, and Randy knows very well what kind of lighting we're looking for. So, so it does mean the, the building across the street will be sort of lit up all the time. Is that the? I mean, so it'll be, it'll be, you know, it's not facing us, but the building itself will be bright from the downward facing light. It will be. It'll appear. It should appear subdued to you enough that if somebody's walking around at the cars, you'll see them. But not so much that the lighting, the light, the building is going to look like daylight or anything like that, or or glaring at you across the street. That's what it should be. And the building inspector has a measuring mechanism for the one foot candle if you have a concern. But you know, we, we we've had very good luck with the shoebox lighting. Okay, and that's that's the whole trick to it. That downward lighting um, is really the key because there's. there's like I mean, you probably, well, you weren't here for the dark sky effect earlier, but we about about I want to say ten years ago, some lady at the time enrolled all of the planning board into the the a group called Dark Sky, and we were she renewed us for like two or three years in a row, and we were getting all this information in the mail. At least I was. I think everybody else was getting it too, and it was actually very informative, and it showed. All kinds of stuff about the dark sky, and it actually show pictures of the world taken from far above the Earth. Especially, you could see where um, Vegas was, where LA was, and you're talking what you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles above the Earth from the satellites. And it was like, wow, where North, where North Korea was. So you guys were moon. <laughs> yeah, and you know that's where we got a lot of this, you know. And one of the things that they advertise exactly, they use the word shoebox lighting, it's downward. Those lights don't have the upward effect to the sky. And so you're, you're really subduing, forcing the light down and not much outwards. Yeah, yeah. So, so certainly for light pollution, I understand downward light is what you want, but you know, the sky's worried course. about being the neighbors. So what, yeah. Where do you live in reference to that? Uh, 370, across the street. Across the street. Right across is that New Phil's? House? As across as anyone yeah, can be. It's up a little bit, isn't it? It's not it's directly across. diagonal. It's a new house just north of Phil's old house. <coughs> okay. And actually, the house here was moved, was attached to Phil's old house. Yeah. I remember seeing that move. Less well, close was? Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Um, no, so the other thing is the, the no parking area is paved, but there won't be cars. It'll, it'll, it. it'll be actually be painted in some way to delineate where the no parking is. So it won't be an imaginary section. It'll be, de it'll be delineated, whether it's a lot of striping or just some, some, some lines there. But <coughs> excuse me, the, the drawings right here say there will be something properly, adequately delineating the no parking. Okay. And, and if it if it spreads to cover that, what what happens at that point? Right, not that we expect it to, but just if it if it does, you know, for seeing that. Yeah, I mean, to realistically say there'll never be a car there, no, no, it's no, probably no, fictitious. But, it, but I mean, it spreads over the, the, the vast they majority of time, them you go you go to the zoning enforcement officer, um, or come back to see us, and we will notify adequately notify the zoning enforcement officer, but he would be the first course of action to be the zoning the zoning enforcement officer who's the building inspector. Okay. Paul lives two three houses down the road, down Cummins Road. If you got a problem, go see him. River Drive. River Drive. Oh, he does? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's, 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 he's all, he's all, he's all he's seven, he's about five years. No, no, whatever. Do you think this is Harry Russell's old house? And that's my word. Okay. Are we good? Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the application for site plan approval special permit and to approve your application in a limited business special permit. Bait or winnow. 
site plan approval. Site plan approval. Site plan approval for a special permit. Based on, your, the app, based on the following findings and conditions. The project satisfies the general purpose of site plan approval. The project is in harmony with the general purpose of the bylaw and the limited business zone. The project is not detrimental to the future or established character of the neighborhood. The intended uses are not prohibited by the terms of the bylaw and are grandfathered. The board, board determines the work conducted is in accordance with the following plan will be in compliance with a site with a section of the site plan approval special permit. Um, Eaton drawings as of where's your revised date? Okay, revised September twenty-five, two thousand. 18. The planning board has reviewed and granted the following conditions not to exceed a total of 10 cars for sale and repairs, um, employee and customer parking. Oh, wait a minute, we ought to be more specific with that. Two employee and four customers. Okay. Don't forget, I don't know if you care about that, but that's, that's the, the housing house. park. You want to keep the housing park, okay. housing to the house. Okay, just okay. want to make sure that there's no confusion. Um, the green space to be added up front, all repairs inside. Copies of the site plan approval of the site plan approval application have been distributed as provided in the bylaw. Um, satisfies site plan review criteria. Um, planning board places the following conditions. The approval is for the following use only and for the use of any other and use of the site for any other purposes is Prohibited without further approval of the planning board, exotic auto. No sign detail has been provided. Applicant to return with sign detail. Um, outdoor lighting fixtures shall comply with the bylaw. Uh, applicant will return with light fixture details. No storage trailers, shipping containers, temporary or permanent are allowed um, on site. Hours of operation shall be 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. This approval is subject to other boards if and as required, including Hadley Conservation, Hadley Water Commission, Board of Selectmen, state agencies, any project changes direct or any other boards. Any project change is directed by other boards or agencies must be approved by the planning board. Um, one set of, well, there's no site, there's no uh, construction to speak of, is there? No. So you don't need to have it on site. Um, What's the hours? 8.30? 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Um, site plan shall not be affixed until the notice of a decision is affixed to the site plan. Do we still do that, Bill? Uh, yeah, just sign off on it. To okay. Be sure everything is... Okay. Um, I think the rest of it can delete. Yeah, really, the rest is really... That's the motion. And... I will oh. make it contingent upon. Because then we're going to get back to the conditions. That the uh, owner and conditions. the sign it. What do you want to call this? The, the, the agreement. The letter agreement. Letter, letter of agreement. Between the owner and your son would be the manager? Yeah. All right. And the son, the manager. Paul, is this agreement. A, what's, what's the corporate structure? Is it a proprietorship, limited liability corporation, LLC? LLC. 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 Owner and son. So is your son a partner in the LLC? Well, yeah. <laughs> you can make him up. Sign. He has to be signing this as a as the LLC, not as an individual. On display in office. Yeah, I have the LLC. Shop, walk and shop. Yeah. But I'm the, I'm the one, so I'll sign it. Okay. Letter of agreement. Between owner, between, yeah, all letter of agreement. Exactly. Not all same. Letter of agreement with owner and son to be signed and on display in shop. Right. And this is the letter of agreement. Okay. That's the motion. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes with Mr. Dwyer abstaining. Five four zero to one. Four zero one.
So can I just, uh, one clarification, is, is the, uh, is 40 feet signage on the building plus 40 feet sign, or it's 40 feet? 40, for, 40 foot road sign and 40 foot on the building can be divided between up to four signs. They, they, they show up to 220, foot, 220 square foot signs. It would be one facing, well, one facing you and one facing Cummins Road. Give him the Randy the agreement so he can get the signatures for that. Okay. So they're going to get keep it on the shop. Okay. Very good. Okay. I'll, I'll get them to sign this. I'll get a copy back to you. And then, yeah, yeah. 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 copy. Yeah. Keep it yeah. in the shop. Okay. How many do you want? I leave one. And then probably uh, email Bill with uh, PDF. the PDF. PDF. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Paul, play nice out there, okay? All right. All right. Okay. Cool. So information. Oh, we got um, the ad legal advertisement for the Gazette and the legal notice of our zoning hearing of uh, motion a motion to pay three hundred fifty dollars and eighty six cents of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Three fifty and eighty six. And then we got official rescinding of the zoning article on the parking. I'm sure we got everybody has it with uh, this was uh, emailed to us. And that is all I have. Anything to do? I don't know. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion send Jimmy Max to Colorado. I, I, I do have one other thing I want to... For a month. For a, for a month? You, right. you. Make sure you do good you. job. I, I, I do have one thing I want to bring up. Um, I went by it. The, the, uh, remember Mr. The, uh, Tim sent us an email. I had a question. Did we approve this Tesla sign on the Pride site? Correct. Right. And we said we did not. Correct. And I see the sign has been erected. Yes. And not only that, it's internally illuminated. Yes. I went by it the other night and I see that it was lit up. So what kind of sign? The Tesla sign for the charging station on the back of the building that we asked about. Remember you asked if we approved that sign? I said no we didn't. Is that a directional sign? No. Yeah. No, it's an advertising sign. It is? And it's pretty big. I mean it's not a, if it's a directional sign, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. What's the hang up for that not opening? I don't know. I don't know. Now, do we want to bring it to the zoning enforcement officer's attention, or yes. we just want to wait until they come back and give them a tough time about no, it? No, just they we should. used to give, bring things to his attention. And okay, I would say just because he did ask. Why you want to make him look like the bad guy? Pride is going to be in in two weeks, according to a call I had today. Okay. okay. But think, so what uh, are they coming back for? Final sign off. They are getting. Uh, well, then what's the sense of uh, sending Nyhart a letter well, that's for? Exactly. We're right. back in two weeks. We just won't sign it. Right. I won't yeah. sign it. Exactly. Um, well, I'm not sure exactly what we need to sign off on. They are going to the conservation commission either tonight or tomorrow. Okay. And I okay. guess the question was whether that is going to have any changes. But you know, let's yeah, let's just send uh, send Tim. Yeah, yeah it's his. We, he asked us if it had been allowed. We said no, and it's been installed. So I think uh, he owns this one. He owns this one? Well, they, they, they haven't occupied the building. They haven't got an occupancy permit, and I think we should handle it right here at the planning board. 
If they had an occupancy permit and stuff, they someone issued a sign permit. Well, that would be Tim. So, so that's why I think what you the? refer it back, right back to him. Oh, good move, right? Unless they put up the sign without a permit, in which case I'm going to put it past them. That right. might that might be so. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I think we've agreed to we're refer it to them. So, if okay. you want to drop them an email, yep. I will if I okay. remember it in the morning. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Yeah.